All righty, folks. Teenage Tycoon is rocking and rolling. Last week's guest, Allison Prince, helped share with the kids how to turn trash into cash. He was a part of doing over $100 million in e-commerce last year. We got to talk with Mr. Bill Allen, the lead of Teenage Tycoon, about turning trash into cash. This is an exciting topic, man. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I've known Allison for a few years now, and I've seen her on stages, and I've seen all the teaching that she does. Uh, she's a total inspiration. So she used to be a teacher, and then she started selling stuff online and totally changed her life. She's taught, she told the story to the kids about how she made her first $200 online and how they went over $100 million in sales this year. Uh, obviously, she's not teaching anymore. And, uh, she, yeah, they, it, I mean, she's not teaching anymore. Just, you know. Yeah. Like. One of the kids asked her how how much, how much do you work each week? And ah. she was like, uh, she's like, I really like to work. It's a lot of fun. I also like to be home with my family. And she's really easygoing. It was so fun with the kids, but she's like 20 hours or so a week. And they were like a hundred million dollars in sales in 20 hours a week. She's like, I have a really great team. And like, how many employees do you have? She's like, none. <laughs> <laughs> Where's this team we speak of? <laughs> she's got a couple of contractors that help her and support and stuff. So it was really cool to just kind of see her in her element with the kids. Um, she was wow. getting them involved. You know, it was really, really fun to watch. It was awesome. So I've got to ask, I'm, I'm interested in turning trash into cash. I mean, that how, how does this story begin? Well, the, she took the beginning of the story to kind of get the kids pulled in. And right. he showed a picture of, she lived, she, they lived in Puerto Rico for a few years. They moved there for the taxes, obviously. And um, she showed a picture of her neighbor who she talked about with, like e-commerce and some of the stuff she was doing gave told her neighbor about it and there was a picture of all of these um it was it basically looked like it was an empty lot with just a bunch of trash in it it was and it was like a landscaping trash so like okay. leaves that had fallen but these are palm fronds so that fell out of the palm trees they had a storm sure. and there were just palm fronds everywhere like dead ones like brown dead ones right and so this woman took them and then, and she said, what do you see back there? So it's like the opening line. Like, what do you see? Uh, in the what do you see? Kids like, I like it. Kids are like, I don't know, like dirt, grass. It was all a lot of real estate kids. So they were like <laughs> money. Like uh, <laughs> I see a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> ADU. Uh, uh, yeah. ADU, a new house. And so, um, so she said, yeah, money is right. You got it right. And she showed this picture of, of a woman who took all of these palm leaves dead palm fronds yep. and she trimmed them in the shape of like kind of like a spade like a, okay. a yeah, yeah. picture of a spade on a playing card and then the next slide was a glass vase in a house next to a couch with three of these palm fronds perfectly cut into a spade ah. and it was a decorative design that she sold three palm fronds for like i don't know a hundred dollars like 99 dollars. so she actually took the the palm leaves and and then really? all then the next slide was all, she took all the trimmings and then bundled them into a little like um, a nice like uh, cylindrical wrapping Yeah, where it was like a decorative piece that, that she they used with like a nice bow. And then the third picture was all the sub clippings that were too small for that, that she turned into boutonnieres and oh. sold those on Etsy. And so the woman made about $200 per leaf 200 bucks per leaf basically yeah and was like uh just built a business that has done multiple seven figures and now all the people in the neighborhood the uh, trash collectors in the neighborhood the landscapers what they do is they collect them all and they drop them off at her place for free so they don't have to dump them in the dumpster yeah because they have to yeah they have to trash to them right they have to dump them and now and now she sends so this woman she used to do it herself then she got kind of tired of doing it herself and right. then she got, now she has a fulfillment center that does it for her and she doesn't do any of it other than just coordinate it all. Wow. And made, uh, made more than a doctor. I think she made $500,000 net last year. On palm fronds. Palm fronds. That's it. <laughs> and so the kids were like, wait a second. It was just mind blowing. And I'll tell you what, the parents, like I talked about before, they're looking over the shoulder going, wait, what are you saying? What? What? And what? Huh? How can I do this? She also shared a bunch of her websites that she goes to to find how she finds trends, how she finds things that are going to sell really well, and what she sells like different seasons and different times and where she finds it and where she goes and buys it from and the recommendation, the whole system. 
for the kids wow. to do it. I mean, I I literally want to go start an e-commerce business right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm going to drive down the street and see what's lying around and I can pick up his, you know, again, the, yeah. when you're running you a business, part of it is, is materials. And she's, her material is zero. Well, it reminded me of my farm. So on my farm, we have, we, we use hay mulch to, for all of our crops and our produce. Uh-huh. And um, we, it was getting really expensive and we had all these trees. We have trees every 60 feet. We probably have 300 uh, fruit trees out there in, okay. on, the, on like three and a half acres. And um, we were, we were trying to reduce cost in hay. It was just like massively expensive. And sure. there was a guy who, who was cutting the trees down in the neighboring house. And I went over to him and they were chipping it all up. I said, Hey, what do you do with all these wood chips? And he's like, uh, we, well, I have to take them to the dump and, and they charge, I said, they charge you to drop them off. He's like, yeah. I said, well, you could just drop them off here. And okay. he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, great. I said, how, how often do you do this? He's like every day. Every day I have to drive all the way to the dump. I said, well, if you're ever in this area, just come over here and dump um, wood chips in my yeah. on my farm, and then we will distribute it all throughout the, the garden. You can just dump it here for free. He's okay. like, as often as I want? I said, yeah, as often as you want, as much as you want. And we still can't get enough of it. So it's totally free material for me, reduces the yeah. overhead cost of the farm. Now I'm not turning around selling it, but I would have had to pay for this. So it was very similar to that of just thinking about things differently of like, instead of you know, how do we get the cost of hay down? It's like, what else could we use other than that for a lot of what we're using this hay for now? So uh, it's it's just about creativity inside of a business and and trying to figure out how to, how to, yeah, like you said, reduce the material costs or figure out what you could do with it. And I thought it was re- really creative. And honestly, the the other things, like the boutonnieres didn't come until later. Right. Like, and, and she was like, now I'm wasting all of this. I wonder what else I could do with it. Is there a market for this? And then there was. And so it's really interesting. And now obviously she's built up a big market. People know what it is. And th- and then one of the kids was like, how much does she sell the glass jar for? So like, she doesn't huh. even sell the glass jar. She just like, she just yeah. ships the palm fronds. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The glass, the gla- that's really, that's, that's a good call. Right. Cause. And it might be better than the big secret that Allison talked about of like what it was because I think it'll help everyone that's listening to maybe restructure some things that they're doing. But um, she really sh- tried to teach the kids about pain, like solving okay. other people's pain instead of selling stuff. And so we talk okay. about this in real estate all the time, obviously. You know, yeah. if we go into a seller's house, it's not about like, what can we pay for the house? All that stuff. It's like, how do we solve the pain? If there's no pain, if there's no motivation, we're not going to get the price that we need to, to move yeah. the house. We're not going to be able to uh, trade equity for ease and speed of transaction and all that stuff. Like we have to buy right. And so yeah. we can, we understand that kind of, I think some real estate investors really get stuck on that. They don't get it, especially in the beginning. They think they go find a realtor, you know, put an offer in, do, put 20% down, all that stuff. Yeah. But if you can really figure out like a pain solution. And so what she, what Allison talked about was if that woman was like, do you want to buy some dead palm fronds to decorate your living room? she would not have sold any of them. Right. And it's just, nobody's going to be like, yeah, I want some like dead leaves in my living room. But what she said, like all of her marketing from the beginning was, do you have trouble keeping your plants alive? Ah. And so her market, she understood her market and her avatar was people who kill plants on a regular basis. Like me. Like me. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. And hey, but if you, you give me it dead. I will. I won't make it dead twice. And it, it there's pictures of how nice it looks in the living room, all that stuff. And it's like, you know what? You can go on vacation as much as you want. And when you come home, it's still going to look really beautiful. And Genius. it was, it was. So the, the message and the marketing is about solving a problem that people have, and then they'll buy your product. So, I mean, and she, so she gave another example and there's a lot of gold here. So I'm going to leave yeah. a little bit behind the curtain. Okay, folks. So you got to come into teenage tycoon to watch the recording. Cause it was amazing. But Allison also told a story of when she sold cupcake liners, she sold out of cupcake liners. She's like, who has cupcake liners in their house? Everybody raised their hand. Who's seen them at the grocery store. Like yeah. they're everywhere. Right. And she yeah. sold so many, like millions of dollars in cupcake liners, but she had an audience of moms on her email list. And so if she sold cupcake liners, like, oh, this red cupcake liner, like you hear people try, this is how they people. 
to sell e-commerce stuff. It's sick. It's going to look better. It's cheaper. It's prettier. It, like whatever it is, that's how they're selling the stuff. But what she said was she said, hey, moms, I know you're tired of doing dishes all day with your kids. So if you, you, what you can do is you can have a picnic or a day out with the kids or a time in the car or time at the grocery store. Just get this cupcake liner and put the snacks in the cupcake liner. You can take it with you. You go there. And once they eat all the snacks, you just throw it away. You don't have to do any dishes anymore. You're tired. You're, you're worn out. And so she repurposed the cupcake liners to be a tool for the moms to be able to carry around handheld snacks for their kids and throw it out afterwards instead of doing dishes. <laughs> and that's uh, how she sold Allison's like a billions genius. of cupcake liners. And so she went on to give them like 10 different examples of how you can think about the person that you're trying to support and solve pain. Um, how She showed them how to use uh, chat GPT to find the pain in any item that they want to sell. How to well, write let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit. So, um, I actually let me ask about the students first, right? They're let's call it average age 11, 12, something like that. Yeah, um, that's probably true. Uh, I don't know. We have uh, quite a few that are like six, 15 to 18, 15 to 17. So, all right, and then so let's call we have, it. Um, yeah, there's probably an average age 13, 14. Okay, 13, 14. Is chat GBT something they're already comfortable with? Like, yeah. Some, some were like, they knew what it was. So they're not allowed to have it on their school computers. I found out like, uh, so oh. Allison knew all this. She's been, um, so because they'll just like plagiarize or whatever. Yeah. Use, use, use it for, for evil. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so they, we talked about like how to get an account, how to set up. They all seem okay. pretty familiar with it. Like they understood. Okay. I was just what curious. Was. Maybe not like how to write the exact prompts and things like that, but we gave them all the prompts and things and, yeah. and, you know, Hey, use it for, um, uh, there was a lot of things that we talked about because some of it was like she talked about Pinterest. She talked about a couple other sites, which sometimes there's stuff that's like not so great for them to see on there. So there was right. a lot of conversation about supervision and stuff like that with when it came to that. Sure. And then, yeah, they I mean, most knew what ChatGPT was. Okay. But I don't know that they've all used it before. The yeah, younger just... kids, the older kids, for sure. They were like, oh, yeah, 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 I know. What it is. Yeah, because it's coming. I, I think ChatGPT is, is coming up and I think the younger generation will skew towards it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna ask my nine year old actually when I get back from this trip if he knows what it is, and then and yeah. then he's gonna say yes because he wants to be cool, and then I'm gonna ask him what it is like, well, what is it? Tell <laughs> me what it is. Let's see if he does. Um, exactly. But I think they do. I think it's something that, I mean, they're 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 a lot hipper than we think. They're, oh yeah, absolutely. More technology enabled. Yeah. Uh, and then the thing that I know about Chat TPT, and again, I'm over fifty, so I'm I'm ancient in their world, is you do have to be almost a prompt engineer. Right. It is about the question. Yeah. You have to ask if you ask the right things, you'll get the right answers. And and then what I love to do is just keep expanding and expanding and expanding. Uh, so it's like, give me 10 more, give me 10 more um, and give me it in this, like this, this is put the it in a table, put it this or this. Yeah. The more, the more that I, the more information that I can give it and the more kind of guidelines, uh, the better. So like an example was here, what we did was why don't we pick a product right now? Like what is something that you think that, like just pick something. I mean, you can look around a your camera. Office. Okay. Camera. A camera. Um, so camera. then like, so if you want to sell a camera and I don't know that the margins really work on this, but um, yeah, it, let's use, um, here's an example that uh, let's use more of a commodity, like an earring okay. or like a bracelet or something like that. So All these right. kids Bra are making this stuff or bracelet. Um, so you have a bracelet that, so what she did was she talked about like looking for trends, like popular things that are going okay. on right now. So right now, like the number one trend when we did that, did this exercise was Valentine day, Valentine's day nails. Oh, okay. Makes sense. So the like girls buying these fake fingernails or nail paintings for Valentine's day. Yeah. And so what she, what she was saying then is like, this is a hot trend. Like she's selling it, but the way that you're selling it is very different than just selling, like competing with all the other thousands of nails that are out there. Right. Um, but like a bracelet as an example is like, okay, what pain, what pain could a bracelet solve? So like, as you, you talk through that of like, what, what other, what other tools could you use a bracelet for to solve a problem could be a, a, um, a prompt in chat GPT. She used scrunchies as an example. 
on oh, one yeah. of the, she used like five things. It was scrunchies. It was dryer lint. It was like a ton of different examples. Like, do you want to sell your dryer lint? You could sell your dryer lint. And so <laughs> no she went way. That. Yeah. She went through that and showed him all of it. But a scrunchie is a, is a good one that she went through that I actually have an answer for that I never thought about. Okay. So everybody thinks like a scrunchie is something that you like put yeah. in your hair, right? To yeah. tie your hair back. Um, but what she, what she, you can see some of the prompts that came is like uh, putting it on your wrist to cover up a scar potentially um, or, oh. uh, or multiple okay. scrunchies to cover up yeah. a scar. There was one that was um, that used it for like um, cooling on your head, like soaking it in cold water and putting oh, it on your, yeah. like a headache. Um, it was like, all, and put, then put, put it in water and put it in the freezer. And it's like, it was, there was a ton of different things that came up of like, these are some things that's creative things that scrunchies can solve. And so I, I then get you it. imagine get like it. sending yeah. an email out or posting about this or telling a story. Like if I, you went on Facebook and told a story about like, I had the worst headache and I had nothing around the house to take care of this, but I remember reading something and I, I soaked my yeah. scrunchie ice water, put it on my head and it just felt so relaxing. And then it's like a link to your Etsy shop. So I figured I would make scrunchies that were specifically designed for this. And you can go to my Etsy shop and get them. And then uh, she also talked about using micro influencers and things to, uh, to promote it and and link Etsy shops for free, just for sending out some product, all kinds of like the whole system that she uses, like for the adults and, and and I kidified it almost like just made it really simple for the kids and fun. And they got, they got so excited. I mean, some of the kids up till then were like, you know, I don't really want to like buy stuff on Craigslist and flip it. They, they, some of the other ones like found their purpose then and were like lighting up over this. They really loved it. It was, it was cool to introduce some new things every two weeks. No, I think I, I, what you're doing with Teenage Tycoon every two weeks, a speaker, and then every other week, the off weeks you're doing kind of accountability as I remember it's, it's just, this is going to catch so much momentum. And the stories of success and, and is just going to start breeding on itself. It's going to be fun to watch this evolve. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't specifically think that we're loud enough about what we're doing, and I could be better at that for sure. Um, really, everything in my life, everybody I talk to, kind of one on one or in a small group, they're like, "This is totally needed." Uh, my kids need to be in this. They sign up, but it's yeah. it's about kind of you know, doing, doing a better, I mean, as a marketer, it's about being louder, being a, a real noisy. And, um, and I, I love it. It's really cool to see some of these folks, the kids come out of their shell going on and and the speakers that are lined up. It's really exciting. Like this was, you don't get Allison Prince to jump on no. Zoom with anyone. Like she just doesn't do this kind of stuff. And she did it because of the kids. That's for why sure. she did it. For sure. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, just, uh, it's, she's been a great, a great friend the past few years. So being able to come on and, and, and like, she did it for the kids at seven o'clock at night and she stayed on Ooh. for an hour and a half. Wow. And just like an hour then answered questions for a half an hour, like 40 minutes afterwards. Like we were just, I was there until almost nine o'clock my time. And so it was just really cool to see. And all of her kids, all of her kids have, um, they have to pay their bills through a business. So they have to, they all sell products themselves. Wow. And so she's got her kids living by example, paying for everything. They set up a business when they were young. They have to learn how to sell e-com type stuff. And her kids are doing it. They're making her kids made multiple six figures last year in their businesses selling this kind of stuff. And they're how old roughly? Yeah. uh, The oldest I think is like 15. Okay. So like 15 to 12. So right in the sweet spot. Maybe 16, 16 to 12. I think one of her kids has a driver's license. So 16 to 12 probably. I think they have four kids. Wow. What's next? What, who's the next speaker? Do you have that lined up? Can we get, tease that or no? Yeah, for sure. Um, so they just finished reading this book swim that we talked about. Yep. And so this Thursday is me. So I'm doing the accountability. I'll be in Las Vegas for the Super Bowl actually. So Thursday night, I'm going to find a place in my hotel and do the call for them because it's nice. It's mandatory and I love it. And then, uh, next week, the next, week is the author of the book that they read so they read this book swim by walter yep. bond we talked about shark sucker fish and parasite yep. and walter is coming to talk to them it's like a big surprise they, they they i think i i don't know if i announced it yet so they're going to be shocked to and they're going to talk about the book like yeah they did a book club for a month we're reading the second book now uh, millionaire next door but the author walter bond he's a, a nba basketball player and yeah. that um started public speaking he's in the public speaking hall of fame 
He's a business coach, consultant now, just amazing guy. Wow. So, and you've very, seen him, speak, I, I think. You've I have. Him. I did. He was a wonderful speaker. Very, very um, inspirational. The kids are going to love him. Oh, he's going to, he's going to crank him up and uh, <laughs> hooked up. it's going to be really fun to watch. I'm just going to let him do his thing. And yeah, just he's go. so animated. He's so fun. <laughs> he's, he's going to pull him in. Uh, yeah. I've seen him on zoom before too. Like I've, I've had him do a couple presentations for me for the military on zoom. And okay. he is just as powerful on zoom. Like my computer shakes, <laughs> like, the state, you know, cause he's, he's he just not comes a through. Man. Yeah. No, and, he's uh, a big boy. Yeah. NBA yeah. player. And yeah. he's, he, I, his house shakes probably here in Florida when he's talking and, and just, he's gives it everything he's got. So I'm excited to see the kids react to that. Yeah. Well, folks, we'll put a link below to Teenage Tycoon more and more. If you need to check it out, see what it's about. Clearly uh, feels like it's heading in an amazing direction, which again, if you go back to episode one, I knew it would. Uh, Bill Allen, any other kind of closing thoughts? Wrap this up. No, the, the only thing I'll share, I don't know if we talked about it before, but um, we're starting to take applications for the financial aid for it. So um, oh. for people that pay in full, you know, so the people that, you know, watch this and, and uh, you know, the people that pay in full for the membership, we're doing a buy one, give one. So if we got a pay in full member, then we're going out to our list of people that uh, have a financial need for this. Because I think the people that need this can't afford it. So um, the most, need, need it the most, I should say. I think everybody right. needs this. But, um, and then they have to keep a certain activity level up and engagement okay. to be able to keep the scholarship. Okay. So uh, I'm excited about that. that. We're going through some of the applications now and we've got three or four slots that we're giving out to let some people in for that. So Wow. Uh, your heart uh, has always been one of your strongest muscles. Uh, mm. This is just another example of it. So uh, I appreciate you. That's a great move. Buy one, get one. Uh, it makes everybody yeah, I, feel good. So I think it's going to be incredible for and, and what what I'm really excited about is if we can give away a scholarship for a year, that kid and that family starts doing a lot better with some of the financial tactics we give them. And then okay. the year after that, they can sponsor another kid. That that's my I that's that's the vision that I have for something like this. So let's let's see what happens. There you go. All righty, folks, go check out link below Teenage Tycoon uh, and the, enjoy the Super Bowl. Go 49ers. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll root for the 49ers because they beat my Ravens. I'm ticked off the Ravens <laughs> didn't make it. So. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm excited to fly out there and, and have a good time. I got a spot for my plane, which is very rare. So I'm excited. I'll be very out there. Very cool. Awesome, buddy. Thanks.